Hi, my name is Sinead Fitzgerald and I'm the Jubilee Parish Youth Coordinator. We're here today at St. Bridget's Church and I'd love to give you guys a tour. So here we are at what used to be the old baptistry and it, it's now been converted into a memorial space for our Archbishop Duhigg. So up here we have our choir loft and this is where we have on a Sunday some of our young adults alongside the rest of our choir singing beautiful hymns for the congregation and it doesn't need any sort of mics or anything and it just beautifully echoes throughout the entire church. Uh, we also have our organ up here which has over 900 pipes and was designed by Robin Dodds. So up here we have our stained glass window depicting Mary, Jesus and uh, St. Joseph as well. It's uh, the piece donated by the Rush family. So up here is where we have our altar and presider's chair. There's also some uh, beautiful stained glass windows here as well. And this is where we will celebrate our masses and other uh, feasts like uh, liturgies of the word and anything else that can come across in our church. So here we have one of our stations of the cross and each of these stations of the cross have been donated by a family within the parish. Some of them are uh, older families than others. Some are quite new immigrant families that have come through. David here from the Australian Student Christian Movement. We're here with Sinead, who is the Youth Coordinator at the Jubilee Parish. Can you tell us what parish life is like here? So parish life here is quite busy a lot of the time because we consist of eight different churches across um, Brisbane. So it is quite a vibrant community in that each different church has a slightly different take on exactly how they run their own sort of church lifestyle. Then we all also come together for events and together too. Okay, I and mean, with this one here, what would people see if they came in here? Like how many people are here? What kind of um, backgrounds are they from? What kind of services are here? So here at St. Bridget's, um, we would typically see around two, three hundred over a weekend. Two or three hundred? Yeah. So um, typically for this parish, this church in particular, there are a lot of young people, as this seems to be one of the ones that is quite popular with them, uh, especially due to having the choir around. They tend to like the sort of music that is um, sung here. Oh, okay, so it's the choir that's bringing them in, because you know, every church on the planet is like, can we get young people in here? Yes. It's the choir. Yeah, yeah, so the choir are quite a powerful um, mover for a lot of them, and there's even some of them who have since joined the choir themselves. Excellent. And what about outreach? What kind of outreach programs does this uh, parish have? Mm. So in terms of outreach, um, we do offer the St. Vincent's uh, Society through here, and so they offer quite a lot of services um, for those who are struggling with poverty or in a homelessness crisis as well. Um, we also offer a place called the Jubilee House, and that is a chance for young families to participate in the parish, but also to have a space to live in for uh, one or two years, depending on what we contract with them. So that is a space where they get to live there and participate in parish life, but at the same time, we are helping them save for a house deposit. Oh, okay, that's amazing. So they, they stay there and then the money that they would normally pay in rent, you give it to them. Yes, use. yeah, so yeah. they end up paying um, rent as per usual and then that is collected for them in a separate fund that is then returned to them at the end of their lease. That's great. Now as youth coordinator, what is your role? What do you do? So within the parish, I work primarily with our primary school kids. So across our three different primary schools, so St. Finbar's, St. Joseph's and St. Ambrose. So within those, I run a weekly uh, youth group with them. So that is for our seniors, the senior primary students of year five and six. And with them, we do different activities. A lot of it is just learning about evangelization and growing in their faith and relationship with Jesus. Oh, okay, excellent. So if someone came here and said, look, I, I don't know much about the Catholic faith. I'm thinking about being a Catholic. Can you tell me why Catholic? What's unique about the Catholic faith? What would you say to them? Well, I think one of the real draw cards for myself within the Catholic tradition is our 
masses especially and just how um, reverent, the reverence we hold with the Eucharist especially as our source and summit. Okay, so that's the thing that really stands out to you, great. Yeah. Now, what is it like being a, a young person and being Christian in Australia? Because we often hear that, well, we're not as religious as we used to be, or we're not as practicing as we used to be, um, and you go to university. So what's it like being sort of a Christian in that setting? It definitely can be quite challenging. I find it to be quite a countercultural approach, and I think a lot of Christians hold um, the same sort of beliefs. Um, I feel like it's very interesting in a lot of circles of how to enact like the morals and values that we hold as Catholics within our, well, I guess, secular lives as well. So making sure that it's not just on a Sunday that we're showing out this Christian faith, but also trying to enact that into our other parts. But there is a certain um, carefulness that we have to take within that as well, and the prudence to ensure that whilst we're living out this Christian life that we aren't um, pushing an agenda too harshly, especially for those who might have been hurt by the church in the past. Mm -hmm. And do you have friends who aren't Christian? Like, what do they tend to say to you? Or what do you tend to hear from that university? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a Catholic. Uh... Yeah, well, actually, quite funnily, um, when I used to study engineering, I found it quite a challenge uh, with some of my other colleagues, well, the, the other students that I was working with in that, um, there were some times where we'd go down to the Red Room on campus, so the bar at uni, um, and... To study, of course. <laughs> yes, of course to study. Um, and whilst we were down there, we ended up actually having a conversation about faith and discovered that of the seven of us who were down there, three of us were actually youth ministers of different churches. So it was quite a fascinating moment of realisation because none of us had expressly mentioned that we were Christian, but to find out that we actually held very similar values um, and to find a space that was actually welcoming without um, being very confrontational but just open to that discussion and sharing with one another. So that's kind of the feel you have that if you talk too much about it kind of people will go look I'm, I'm doing engineering I'm here at the Red Bar leave me alone. Red Room leave Yes me alone. yeah no so it's definitely a feeling that we get of um, trying not to make it too obvious at first but making it obvious through our actions rather than our words as it seems to be a lot more powerful when we're enacting these morals and values that we say we hold true mm -hmm. in a very obvious way through how we're enacting this throughout our daily lives rather than it's sharing oh this is exactly what i believe and if you have a differing opinion then i can't be friends with you or i can't talk to you mm -hmm. so a lot of my friends actually didn't know that i was christian initially but um, it was over time and i find it a better kind of forum for myself to use as just getting to know somebody first as it helps them kind of break down that stereotype of what it looks like to be christian so rather than having that image of me in their heads from the get-go, they now have this, oh, you can actually be living in modern society and be Catholic at the same time. So what were the number one questions I would ask you or stereotypes they had about you're a Catholic, that means this and this? Uh, I think one of the big ones was, oh, you're a Catholic, so that means that uh, you can't be like joining us and going out for a drink or um, you won't be having these uh, quote, normal conversations about um, different topics, whether that's politics or um, even swearing every here and there and being able to just join in with um, whatever's, I guess, going around in society at the points, whether that was what we're interested in at the time or um, how we think something should be portrayed or going about in the media. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, religious life on campus at chaplaincy? What, at the chaplaincy, what is that like? So at the chaplaincy, we actually have quite a vibrant um, experience now. It wasn't the, quite the same a couple of years ago, but now we have a group of about 30 regular goers at the chaplaincy. And so it's always a lovely community to be able to kind of walk in and out of and be able to always see a familiar face when we do enter on campus. We are able to talk to people both about our faith, but also then about um, how we kind of are interacting within our own courses and subject areas as well. And when you hear about the Catholic faith or the Christian faith or the news, what are the stories that kind of stand out to you the most? Mm. 
So I think one of the big ones is definitely um, all the abuse and the scandals that have gone in the, in the, have occurred in the church. And so that has definitely been something that I can see a lot of people coming to me about the hurt that has been um, portrayed in that. And it's definitely a space where that is a lot of the space where a lot of confrontation comes in. Um, but I find it very important not to uh, come at that in an aggressive way and to be like, oh no, like I didn't do that personally, but rather just hearing out their stories because often it comes from a place of hurt. And Jesus is calling us to act with love rather than to act with pride or our ego. So that is definitely one of the bigger stories that I hear about. And I guess the other big thing would be um, different politicians who are saying that they're from one church or another um, and how exactly that is portrayed in the media. Um, in that quite often there is these connotations behind it of like, oh, well, he claims he's Catholic, but he's doing these other mm -hmm. actions that don't seem to be um, of a Catholic portrayal. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned before about wanting to live the faith, so not just on Sunday, but out in the world. How do you actually do that? Because it can often be countercultural, the kind of things that Christianity teaches, love your enemy, you know, help the poor, give liberally. Um, how do you do actually do that? And what are the things that kind of get in the way of, of doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely some of the barriers are obviously like how we are stereotyped by a lot of society into what we should be doing versus what uh, deserves our time and effort into different things, but also in participating as part of the community. And I think a big part of us comes into the different Catholic social teachings that we um, always are kind of sharing, especially with our young people. It's one of the first things that they learn um, during their primary school education of really just enacting towards the betterment of those who are considered lesser in our society. And whatever kind of place that takes in, however that actually needs to be adapted. So rather than just participating on a Sunday, being able to show in a very social justice way of how this is actually really seen within our society. And it's not just within those who might be experiencing poverty or might be homeless themselves, but also those who are spiritually poor in being able to access those people who may be lonely and may be needing that um, a little bit more of a push towards some sort of help. And it's a quite popular quote by um, St. Mary McKillop, never see a need without doing something about it. So that's something that I definitely hold dear of really acting out of your faith and showing that in your daily life and what you're doing and pursuing is always of something that is trying to help those who are less fortunate. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for having us here and showing us around. You're most welcome.